Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your tarot reading. So while I was shuffling out the cards for you, I feel like one of the major themes that you're going to be dealing with is um, they mentioned getting back to your core values, getting back to the fundamentals and getting back to, you know, a, a very simplified state. I feel like for this message, um, a lot of you might be dealing with the energies in different ways, but I'm feeling overwhelmingly um, for some of you, you know, like back then when times were really hard, right? When, like when, when things were just, um, when you were starting out, especially on your financial um, and professional journey, um, I feel like there were a lot of people that were rooting for you. There were naysayers, but there were a lot of people rooting for you. And I, it seems to me like there were a few people, a handful of people who were always your support network who were emotionally always available to you, who boosted up your self-esteem, who helped you out financially, who were there for you through thick and thin. And now that you have pretty much made it, now that you have pretty much made it, it feels to me like for whatever reason, because of geographical distance or because of life circumstances, or because just, you know, your life uh, paths diverge from those people, but they were always there for you. And so they're really urging you to reconnect with those people to make sure you show your appreciation and to make sure that you include some of those people in your success. Okay. It's almost like we can't really go through life as if, you know, every man's an island. We also have to give thanks and, and, and show gratitude to the people that were with us from the beginning of the journey. People that believed in us and people that never let us down. So I feel like for some of you, you might be detaching or you might be leaving a lot of people behind in your life. But don't lose sight of what's really important and don't lose sight of the people that were there from the very beginning. And so knowing your roots, knowing, you know, where you came from, knowing that who the people were that helped you along the way, that is very crucial for this month. And on top of that, getting back to core values basically means don't be blindsided by the money. Don't be blindsided by the fame, the prestige, the recognition that comes with it. Um, sticking to your core values and speaking your own truth and, you know, showing other people that you haven't, you haven't let these things go to your head. You haven't really lost your way. You haven't really, you know, compromised your moral values. That is something very crucial as well as it relates to, you know, getting back to core values. Um, I see an element here when it comes overall to family family upbringing and especially how that shapes us and I know I dwell on this a lot through all of my readings across the months but I do feel like you are majorly a lot of water signs in particular are majorly a product of their upbringing and of their environment I feel like there were people in your life that really helped to shape you they might have done so in a very domineering, you know, um, strict way, and you might have resented that growing up. And then for others, um, you might have had parents who were a little bit more on the irresponsible, laxer end, and you yourself, now that you're in a position where you can, where you might be a parent yourself, you know what technique, what style, what methodology you don't want to, or you do want to, uh, raise your children and you know what values you want to instill in your children. So they're saying like, you know, don't steer too far away from these traditional core values because they are there for a reason. And it's important to figure out what works and what doesn't before you discard them. Okay. So obeying order and tradition, I feel is a major element coming through for this, um, this month, knowing that, you know, whatever has been passed on, whatever has been tried and tested, not all of them are outdated methodologies. Some of them, they serve their function. Some of them are still useful and, you know, learning from, from, our predecessor, learning from people that have been in the same predicament and taking their advice to heart will allow you to stay true to your values and allow you to, you know, not have to reinvent the wheel here. So you have a lot of guidance and support and I feel spiritual guidance, spiritual support coming through. 
to kind of steer you in the right direction for this month. Um, not because I feel like, not because you're in danger of going astray, but you're in danger of letting things go to your head or letting things get to your head and not operating from a space where you are following, you know, your higher wisdom, higher self. What I'm also feeling as well is uh, they say loss of time. So there's this element about, you know, in the process of, in the process of doing all of these things that to achieve financial abundance, financial stability, I feel like you were kind of like slaving away. You know, all of your time was project after project after project. And when you do that, you might find that the days go by really fast. And once you've reached the top, the pinnacle of your financial and professional success, it might feel a little bit lonely up there. It might feel a little bit like, it might just feel like, what am I achieving this for? There's nobody here to share this with. Or for some of you, it's, it's like downplaying or putting all the other aspects of your life on the back burner and the pursuit of financial security and financial abundance it, it, it was like you know on the forefront it was your top priority and now this month you're starting to realize like okay I'm, I've made it I'm already here what else is there for me to do what's the next challenge what's the next step where else can i go because i've already I'm, I'm already at the pinnacle of my success so that's an element coming through they're say lo they, they say losing time and forgive me i got sidetracked losing time as in there are a lot of things to do you're constantly working you're keeping yourself motivated internally you're very ambitious coming through this month there's a lot of things to do, a lot of people to see, a lot of meet and greet, like mingling and just, you know, um, I, I feel like a lot of office politics, you know, like just like social niceties that we need to succumb to, office politics that we need to succumb to, meeting this person, greeting this person, um, dealing with hierarchy in a way where you feel like, oh, that other person hasn't really earned their stripes. Why do I need to bow down to them? You know, things like that. And then... On top of that, you feel like all of these things are really cutting away into your free time. All of these things are done for show and you don't really want to be a part of that anymore. It's 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 almost like you don't really care for these uh, rules and regulations and, 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 you know, social expectations anymore because you've got other things that are more pressing on your mind, which is your own professional and financial, um, you know, success. And so... There is a big element here about having a lot of work, not enough time, manage your time carefully, be conscientious about who you are purposely, consciously choosing to spend your time with. And that I, I mentioned this for Libras because I feel like they had a problem with that in the past. Who are you consciously choosing to spend your time with? And are those people in accordance with your life path and are those people um good for you to associate yourself with it are, are they just you know financially like lucrative for you to link yourself up with but in terms of having you know having it, it are, are they good people to you know to to just be blunt are they good people are you choosing consciously choosing to spend your time with and devoting your time and your energy to good people okay so that's something coming through. Let me see if there's anything else um, that came through when I was shuffling earlier. I wrote it down. So I feel like Cancerian men, Cancerian men, and especially if uh, I feel like it's a male energy. So even if you're dating women or uh, other men, I feel like they're saying dating an older lover or having an older lover. So you might be in a relationship and you might have like, uh, you know, with somebody who's older than you, you might in a, be in a relationship and then you might have a lover that is older than you. And they're saying there's a lot of longing. There's a lot of missing this, that older lover, but he or she might be out of the picture for whatever reason they might be traveling. 
Um, and so I feel like there is a lot of longing, but lack of opportunities or lack of time to get back together. And I also feel for some of you, this is an ex-lover as well from the past, okay? Um, in the work, in the work environment, what I feel is you have to be, you know, cancers, you're very cautious. I feel like uh, you're generally very cautious about what you say, how, how you, um, how you control how other people see you. You're very sensitive about that. And you're also very cautious. You're not somebody that runs their mouth. Okay. And um, I feel like generally you are very, very likable because uh, you have a great sense of humor and people are naturally gravitate towards you because you're very caring and you have a great sense of humor. But for this month, the energy that I'm picking up is um, there is a sticky communication coming through in the work environment. So it's almost like you believe one thing, but you have to ad advocate for something that is counter to what you believe. And so you're grappling with a little bit of an ethical dilemma like, I don't really believe in it. I don't really buy it, but I have to advocate for it. So what do you do? And I feel like, you know, all, for all intents and purposes, you're going to be operating from a space where you you try to, you know, if it's a job, you're going to do your, your job. You're going to do your job well. So that means you need to suppress your own personal urges or personal opinions in order to relay the information to the right audience so some people can say like you know are you selling out are you um behaving in a way that is honorable and i feel like if it's a job it's something that you need to do to survive we all need to do things to survive okay and i feel like for some of you it's in a job situation where you might not believe on a specific in a specific course of action but you're told, you're, you're, you know, you're commanded by higher ups to do something. And then for others, I feel like this is the last message and then we'll go quickly into this reading. So you're finding a new space for living or uh, like you're a new space of residence or you're trying to find a new place for like an office. So I feel like there is a, an element here about ha uh, an environment possibly being a little bit too crowded and you need your own space, okay? So <clears throat> let me just go into this reading because I feel like a lot of the information that came out earlier, it covers elements here in this reading. So let me talk here about this first. So this is your energy showing up here as the King of Cups in the reverse situation the king of cups in the reverse is <clears throat> um i often think of this king as you know someone who's very popular very likable uh easy to talk to very approachable loving caring and generally cares about the well-being of people and he has a good heart when it shows up in the reverse position well and he's also a little bit indulgent you know indulgent in food wine women whatever the situation is and this is your energy whether or not you are male so this is male or female it's gender neutral and when it shows up in the reverse position it usually indicates to me a lot of discipline is coming into the picture for this month where you're gonna have to you know put your kind of like um nose to the grindstone uh hitting the ground running a lot of f quick fast paced energy that is coming in a lot of work coming into the picture where your uh, main source of income is heavily heavily dependent on it your financial standing your safety job security within an organization within a company heavily depends upon the the, the hard work that you contribute so I feel that, you know, contrary to what people believe, um, I, I'm sensing that you are somebody that is like this, okay? Very likable, wants, wants to be liked, wants to be popular, wants to ease other people's uh, frustrations, pain, whatever it is. You generally want to help people. And for this month, I feel like you might be put in positions where you realize you can't help everybody. And as well, you might have to do some things that you don't really agree with on an emotional or even on an ethical level. And I feel like on the mild end, it might just be emotionally advocating for somebody or do taking on a project where you don't really believe in the progress, the outcome. You don't really believe in it 100%. 
but because of the way that the work is structured, this is a very structured environment. It can be structured to the point where it's a little bit dogmatic. It can be very, I want to say, it can also be very like stagnant. So people might have outdated views. People might have a very stringent set of protocols, set of regulations that you have to abide by. And it becomes really restrictive. And I feel like you might even have to advocate for a specific course of action because higher ups, your supervisor, your manager, your, you know, the environment that you work in, they tell you do this and you don't really have a choice. At the end of the day, if you do it, you get paid. And so financially, it's a practical decision that you're making, right? And then for others of you, I feel like there's an element here about very anti-establishment, being very anti um uh, status quo. Okay. So I feel like you might be on the forefront leading the charge and trying to refute, trying to debunk, trying to dismantle a system that has gone awry. And I feel at the same time, when, when this happens, you're making this calculation in your head. First of all, okay. It's, it's, it's not a popular viewpoint. I don't know how many people are going to agree with me. And so I feel like you have already weighed out the option that, okay, if I go against the establishment, um, it might hurt me financially. I'm in a good financial space right now. Do I want to take that risk? And then, uh, and then at the same time, I feel like for many of you, there's an element of fear, right? Like, do I have all the skills? Do we have all, you know, do I have the backing of other people? Can I persuade other people? Can I get people on board? And also this is a, not a conflict driven type of a person. This is your energy. You're not conflict driven. You're not like somebody that is, you know, like the, the, the Sagittarius or even the Leos that charge into battle um, to fight for the truth. I feel like you're a little bit more of a lover and you, you don't want, you want people to get along, but there's something going on in, in this, you know, establishment where this hierarchy, this establishment where the order has broken down, somebody might be abusing their power or somebody might be advocating for the wrong things. And so you're grappling with this dilemma. On the one hand, you're safe here, but on the other hand, it's not what you believe in. And so you're trying to work up the courage. This is like new projects, new ideas, new burst of ambition and passion. You're trying to work up the courage. You're trying to embody, you know, more of that Leo and Sagittarius and Aries energy to get things done, to be on the forefront, to charge right ahead with something. So I feel for many of you, there is a little bit of a conflict here at work that you're trying to work through and you're trying to create change or induce change from within and you feel like the only way I can do this if I lead the cause or if I you know charge ahead and try to dismantle it from within so I feel like that's what you're doing I do sense as well the image that you project though to the work in to co-workers to supervisors to you know people that you're working with is somebody that is very pragmatic, somebody who's very practical, somebody very reliable. And you are all of these things, but it just seems to me like you're you're projecting this you're you're projecting a different energy than what you are. And so there's definitely you know this element here about yes, the job pays the bills. I'm making a lot of money, but are you truly happy in that environment? Is it getting you where you need to be? And are you fighting the good fight pretty much? Are you in alignment with your, are you in, in alignment, are your values, or are you in alignment with what you believe in? Because I feel like there are people around you that you don't agree with, but you might try to, you know, play nice and, and try to harmonize the relationship and want to be likable and going with the crowd, even though it's not something that you believe in. Okay. So I feel like those are like, you know, mild to medium to extreme situations that some of you might be dealing with right now in the work environment. I also feel a huge element here about family, family creeping up and especially father figures for many of you. Um, I feel like there was a father figure who kind of who did not behave in a way that was 
I, I feel like, you know, he's, um, he kept everything running. So it's somebody that brings home the money. You know, it's somebody that, that like, um, put a roof over your head, put food on the table, um, allowed you to have a home environment, you know, where, where there was electricity, where there was running water, he paid the bills. But when it comes to your emotional needs, because Cancerian people, the, uh, a house doesn't make it a home. There has to be that sense of love. There has to be that sense of emotional connection in order for you to feel like it's truly a home. Some of you have struggled with this concept, you know, like, um, you might have been very estranged from a father figure. And this is showing up here with this King of Cups, which can be a father figure to a water sign. And it's underneath the Hierophant, which is a family card. So I feel this element here about a father struggling with a father figure. And even, even if... Even if you grew up and you're just like, oh, you know, I didn't like dad because of, you know, all these things that he did. I feel like you have to admit to yourself, he was a good provider. He, you know, he was there. He sent money home, or at least there was money circulating around. And then for others of you, there might be some, some forms of like emotional neglect, emotional abuse, or even some type of like a very absent father in the picture. So he might have done these things, but emotionally he was just not available and emotionally there wasn't that in a, a connection. So there's a lot of estrangement. There's a um, there's going to be talks and discussions here heavily with your father for the month of September as it relates to how the family unit function, who's, um, you know, like, like what family means as well as confronting, getting frustrated and, and having to confront, you know, the having to confront either authority or your father when it comes to, you know, trying to do the right thing, not just putting, putting food on the table, but providing a nurturing, emotionally stable environment so that family members can thrive. So there's discussions about that. And, um, I feel like it's going to bring up some, some issues, some deep buried issues for many of you. And I feel like you're going to start to question once again, those core values. You're going to question again, like, you know, the, your, your purpose, what are you really working towards and how have you kind of like let the important things fall on the wayside, important fam like family relations, important people in your life. How have these things fallen uh, on the wayside? How have these things be put, been put on the back burner in the process of pursuing your career and your professional life and your finances? Okay. So honestly, I feel like money is not going to be a major source of problem for this month. I feel like coming out early you are already kind of like on top of your career. You are already somebody that, you know, people look up to like a, um, I want to say like a mid or a top career professional. And in your work environment, there might not be any room to grow anymore. And so you're trying to figure out, do I take on, you know, new projects? Do I change direction? If I continue to stay here, it, I'm not growing anymore. There isn't another um, like there isn't a step up. So should, where can I look? Where else can I look? And so many of you might resort to, you know, doing freelance work on the side. This is a, a card greatly about like a second source of income, uh, doing two jobs, juggling two jobs, juggling two major responsibilities or two major revenue stream. I feel like in this case, it is a major revenue stream because it feels like you're already tapping out, you know, like maxing out on your career. You're taking on new jobs. There might be um, additional like, you know, family expenditures, a lot of expenditures in the household trying to once again, finding a new space for either living, residing or working from home. And I feel like some of you are coming into this month with a new gig. Okay. Like a, a second source of income, a, a freelance gig that you're doing and, and things like that. So when you are doing this new, this, this gig, 
what I feel is there's going to be a little bit of time before it actually gains traction and will start to really take off for you. So first of all, I feel some of you might be reaching out through, you know, your address book, uh, con making connections, um, contacting people that you've worked with from the past, contacting even past employees for a letter of recommendation, somebody that can vouch for you so that you can so that you can, you know, continue this job search or that you can branch out and start doing freelance work. So you need somebody in the past to vouch for you. And then for others, I feel like there might be, it's like you're getting something off the ground, but there are a little bit of hangups because of lack of agreement or lack of consensus with the people who are in this situation in the environment. And then for others with the hangman, the judgment card, lack of new beginnings and the hangman is kind of like some type of hangups as it relates to, you know, having to get some type of consensus and agreement from other people. So I feel like there are some things that are still being tied up here as it relates to, you know, a second job for others. It could be to me a property that you're waiting on a decision from somebody that you used to live with. You used to cohabit with you used to share have children with as well or you have children with and i feel like if it's a if it's a, like a physical property there's still going to be some hang-ups and it might not clear up until you know about two months time okay so we are in september so that's going to be in the november time frame <clears throat> moving into December. I feel like this usually indicates to me the turn of a new year. So I feel like it might not get resolved until like the very end of this year where there's more conversations, there's more discussion, there is more mutual agreement. So I feel like some things are being held up. And for some of you, you're trying to scrounge up money together. I see like scrounging money together, working really hard for going pleasure for going other activities working really hard scrounge up money so that you can secure a very stable home for your children and so the concept of fatherhood i feel is very crucial coming through for this month motherhood and fatherhood too but i feel like for especially cancerian males um if you have children and if you i, I feel like the the crunch time for you to secure a stable environment for your kids but also for you to really you know uh, it's starting to hit home like what does family mean it's not just the house the roof over their head it's the quality time that you spend with them it's the emotional connection because that to you means everything and so you know give them structure children thrive well in structures okay no matter what you do give them a lot of structure so you might not have the ideal home environment, but as long as you can provide them with that structure to begin with, that's going to set them up for life. Okay, so I'm going to stop this right now and we'll go into your love reading. And I hope this is helpful for some of you who are watching. Um, you know, it's um, I feel like financially you guys have been struggling for quite some time. And so I understand that when there are worries and, and things like that, when, when it comes to your money, I feel like you are you have made a lot of sacrifices when it comes to, you know, uh, wanting to save up, wanting to cr kind of like pass down a legacy to the people that you love. So that means you, you, you make it very hard, like you take it on upon yourself to create a lot of money a lot of wealth so that you can pass it down to your children your wife your husband whoever it is that you love you want to create a legacy you want to create financial stability for the people that you love and you make a lot of sacrifices in order to do so and um i guess the bottom line is we're we're talking about you know getting back to the core value of what's really important it's not the material things really even though we might get lost in you know the 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 survival of everyday life and especially you know in this realm we might get lost in in that concept of needing to have that financial um, stability we might lose out on the emotional connection so i want you to you know just um re-examine the way that you're making money and re-examine the things that you feel money can buy because obviously it can't buy everything okay 
but I feel like you've been struggling for quite some time. And so when money comes in abundantly, you don't mind, you, you, you get a little bit anxious and you feel like if I don't work harder, it might slip away from me. And so there's a lot of anxieties here about what we create. But for this month, at least, I feel like financial pressures are alleviating. And I also feel like you're in a good space now where you can choose where you can choose like um, who you want to work for where you want to work for where you want to devote your time because you're at a point where you are in high demand at the work front okay so let me see what's going on for cancerian people love romance and relationships wow cancers so you've you've got some really good things coming in. Okay, let me get you another card here. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, um, I'm hearing like just slow it down, slow it all the way down. Okay, so this is kind of like doing things in moderation not burning out and you know slowing things down so i feel like you've got somebody in your midst that you're you're really liking and you're taking it upon yourself to you know like like for example it, it's like you you just meet somebody and then you're already projecting into the future what is the relationship going to look like where are we going to live how are we going to get married who's going to marry us uh, where is the wedding going to take place so it's kind of like jumping the gun and jumping so far ahead that it's not realistic so they're really telling you to slow down i have here the temperance card and the temperance card basically means emotional modulation emotional regulation uh, looking at the situation, living in the moment, not projecting so far into the future, and especially don't get so emotionally wrapped up in it where you lose your sense of perspective, okay? So that's the first thing, and it just came screaming out. And so let me just talk about the past. So that's the message for you. Let me talk about the past. We have here the Nine of Cups. And we have here the Knight of Cups. So let me talk about you as a an energy. So the Knight of Cups, I feel like this is your energy here. Um, when it shows up in the reverse position, it basically means running on empty. As you can see, whenever I see like water signs, uh, court cards showing up in the reverse position, it means that their own internal cups are not filled up because in the reverse it pours out right so they're kind of it's like walking around wanting love and wanting emotional satisfaction and wanting emotional stability when you haven't gotten that within yourself so when we look at the laws of attraction whatever we are that's what we attract I feel that many 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 of you have been kind of like bouncing around looking for love and and kind of like uh, attracting the wrong types of people because you're kind of running on empty and this is showing up in the past so I feel like it can mean one of two things first of all the people that you are attracted to with the nine of cups this is a card overall about wish fulfillment this is somebody that you know is in the right place in the right emotional space to attract love they're still careful and they're still discerning they don't let every random joe into the picture but at least you know they're ready to receive love because they are emotionally stable and emotionally sound what you were attracting to uh, attracted to in the past was this state here where you were attracting people that might not have been emotionally confident and comfortable and whole in themselves. And then as a result of it, I feel like it really drained you emotionally and it also left you feeling very depleted. And I'm also sensing for many of you, there were a lot of options to choose from. And I also feel like you went with those options knowing that, oh, there's no really no future, but I just want to have fun in the, the here and now. And that's fine. But you should be very honest with the people that you're dealing with. So 
running on empty. It's basically showing up in the past position. What you send out to the universe is what you're going to attract, okay? Is what you're going to get back. And the, the person that you are and the person that you come into the relationship with or the person you come into the dating environment with, that's whom you're going to attract. For some of you, you might have been dealing here with uh, another water sign. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio in your past. Somebody that was not somebody that might be a little bit jaded and bitter and they're not happy in their own life station they're not able to move away and make their life better so i want to say it's a, a person that is a victim of their circumstance okay could also be very prone to drugs alcohol and things like that too with this knight of cups and the nine of cups both of these are people living in abundant but not being um not being appreciative of their situation Moving forward into the present situation, I have here the Eight of Coins. And the Eight of Coins is a, um, in the traditional Rider weight. this is kind of like something that we have devoted a lot of time in, a lot of resource in, and we feel like it's no longer bringing us satisfaction. Going through the process of dating and, you know, going on dates and not making, not feeling like anybody really stands out. And with this card, as it relates to love, it's like online dating, looking at all the portfolios, conjuring, manifesting the right person that you want and, and exactly the, the type of person that you want to bring into your love life. And it's linked up here with the, an air sign. This is an Aquarius, a Gemini or Libra, the queen of uh, swords. And I feel like you are dealing with somebody who has this quality. This could be somebody that you like. Uh, or this can be somebody that you are, you know, dating right now. And he or she is someone who's very intelligent. They're very smart. They're very discerning. They are, they, they kind of have this internal radar. It's like a BS detector. And when they can, when they, they can call people out on their BS. It's somebody who doesn't mince words. Who usually, I feel like, it's somebody that might be divorced. It's somebody that might be a little bit older than you. But I feel like it's somebody that might also have had his or her shares of struggles in life. Like somebody who is a divorcee, somebody with children uh, that they're no longer with their ex. Or they're, they're like, you know, they, they have suffered some things in relationship. And as a result of that, um, they don't really sugarcoat the truth. They don't really tolerate BS. And I feel like this person is a little bit harder to please okay and so I feel like you're working with this person you're trying to build things together what you're really thinking about what's crowning this reading here is the world and the world basically means a lot of options are opening up a lot of travel arrangement are being discussed you are also possibly in a relationship where it's long distance or geographical distance and there's a lot of travel you are also dealing with somebody that is really, you know, it could be like culturally, ethnically different from you. Somebody that really challenges your beliefs, that really brings a different worldly perspective into your life. Or somebody that is different from you ethnically, culturally, linguistically, whatever the situation might be. Um, I feel like there's a lot of discussions and travel as it relates to coming to see this person, traveling this pers with this person, or the person traveling to see you. I feel that when it's linked up here with the moon, and the moon is, you know, music, <clears throat> dancing, going out, having a good time, partying. When it's in the reverse position, I do sense that the two of you, you know, you, you are a total homebody. And so I feel like one person wants to stay at home and, you know, just um, enjoy the time at home. The other person wants to go out and do all these nighttime recreational things music, concerts, dancing, etc. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so there is like a little bit of a discordant energy as it relates to how the two of you find recreation, how the two of you find enjoyment. And I also feel overall um, talks, discussions about, you know, from a distance, wanting to travel together, even coming into the picture, which is really good. But you need to slow this down. If this is somebody that you're just meeting, you're just dating, put the, these plans on hold, okay? Wait for time to show you whether or not things are going to work out, 
wait to make these plans in the future is Mercury in retrograde until September 5th. So I would advise you any travel arrangement, any travel plans, do it after that date. Just please. Um, so they really want you to slow down. Okay. I keep seeing it with multiple things already. So we want to, let me backtrack a little bit. This air sign. Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. This is a very honest person, okay? They're highly, highly, highly critical. So I feel like, I feel like they're, they're, you know, they're, they don't operate from a space where they can get swept off their feet easily. They put a relationship partner through major scrutiny before they decide to go forward with it. The moon indicates deception here. So you need to be very, very careful about telling them the truth. You need to be very careful about how you, how you tell stories. You need to be careful about communication. You need to make sure that you are totally forthcoming and truthful because I feel like there can be things going awry if, if they sense like, if they send some things off, they're going to dig and dig and dig and they're smart enough. They're going to find out the truth. Okay. They, they have ways of figuring out the truth. So just keep that in mind. So this is a male or female. Okay. What is in the foundation is something that you know to be true. This here is the ace of wands and the ace of wands is like passion, chemistry, moving things really, really fast. The ace of wands is also a really good, passionate new beginning that you have with another person. It is in the reverse position. So it basically means um, for the the two of you, for whatever reason, if you are dealing here with this air sign, there might be some issues as it relates to feeling passion and chemistry in that relationship, feeling that emotional connection. So air signs are not known to be warm, fuzzy people. They need more of an intellectual connection first before they start to open themselves up to the passion and the chemistry. So I feel like it's telling you that, you know, this is going to take some time, but this is going to take some time. Okay. And I also feel like they are at a space where they recently suffered a heartache as well. And so you're not like, you know, the person to come in and, and mend their broken heart. They need to do that work on their own. So I feel like there is somebody that you're dealing with who might have some emotional hangups from the past and they're trying to take things slow. You're trying to push things too fast. So just be careful about that. I have the card of Sagittarius and Pisces coming into the picture. So I feel like if you are, if you were involved here with a Pisces, there might be a little bit of um, deception. Okay. I feel like that's from the past. If you are dealing here with a Sagittarius with the temperance card, if you are dealing with a Sagittarius, I feel like there is a major separation recently from a Sagittarius. You're trying to move on with your life. You have a new air sign coming into the picture. If you are single, I do see heavy air sign coming into the picture, but I feel like this person has some emotional hangups they haven't gotten through yet. And so moving forward into the future, I feel like for some of you, this is retracing your step and moving back into the past here with the six of swords not moving ahead, not moving on, but moving back to the past. And I feel like for past energies, we have a Pisces from the past, as well as a Sagittarius that you might've already dealt with. Possibly somebody that you shared assets with, have children with, were married to. So I feel like you're, you're trying to reconcile. There might've been some communication breakthrough and you're trying to reconcile. And then for others of you, if you are newly dating, we have an air sign here. Uh, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, you're trying to take that relationship to the next level. You're trying to be exclusive with them. And I do see like you have a really strong propensity here to have a stable relationship or rush into a uh, marriage engagement or whatever with that person. So the important thing here, um, cancers, you need to really slow down. I feel like you or your romantic partner is still dealing with some emotional hangups. You need to work through these issues on your own in order to make this new relationship a success. So don't live in the shadows of past relationship hurts. 
that applies to you and that applies to the person you're dealing with as well. So take things very, very slow. They're not going anywhere. So um, I feel like just don't jump the gun, okay? Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't like to, you know, drag the video on, on too long and I don't like to lecture. But um, I wish you the best, okay, Cancers? Take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.